Welcome to the last in the series of Excel Problem Solvers. On this video, Susan and Tim are asking us to help them purchase a car. Susan says, Would you help me pick one of these three cars? I want to spend as little as possible. I want to drive the car until it has 250,000 miles when I assume it will be nearly worthless. I drive about 30,000 miles every year. Thankfully, I have enough money to save so I don't have to borrow money and pay interest on a loan that would cost me an extra 40%. Let's see the three cars that Susan is considering. First of all, she has in mind the Chevy Spark. It's a small engine that gets good gas mileage. She has to pay $1,500 a year in insurance. The initial cost for taxes is $1,450 and every year she spends $210 for a license. Compare the other cars, they have higher numbers for each of those. So the Ford Mustang is 31000 the gas mileage is much lower, the insurance and taxes and license are all higher. Her third choice is the Escalade. Certainly a luxury car with a price of 72000 low gas mileage, high insurance, high taxes, and high license fees. Just how much more will that be than the other cars? We'll find out when we make the bar graph to compare the total cost of ownership for all of these cars. Tim said he would also like to buy one of these three cars. He wants to spend as little as possible. He's going to drive the car until it has 250,000. He drives 30,000 miles a year, so everything so far is the same as Susan. However, the difference is he does not have enough money to purchase the car. And so to make things simple, we are just simply going to add 40% of the price of the car to his spreadsheet. So that will include all the interest and bank fees. Now let's look at the spreadsheet to solve this problem. On the left side we have Susan and all of the calculations that we need to come up with a price for which one is going to cost the most. We'll put the cars in column B, C, and D, Spark, Mustang, and Escalade. The yellow section at the top will talk about the initial costs. So this is the price that she pays the day she buys the car. She has to pay the original price plus taxes. The more complicated question is how much does it cost to own this car every year? And there are three costs that we need to add together. We have insurance, license, and gas. How much are we going to pay for gas? That's a more complicated question than just looking at the price at the pump. We have to know several things. And so we have a blue calculation area from row 12 to 16. First of all, we need to ask the question, how much does she drive? How many miles every year? What is the miles per gallon or the MPG for her car? How much is she paying for gas? And then we will know how much she pays every year for gas. Add those three together and we will have total annual costs, insurance plus license plus the gas. Now the question is, how much is this car going to cost over the entire lifetime of the car? Well, first of all, we know how long she wants to drive. She said 250,000 miles, after which we will assume that the car has basically no value left and she can give it away to a friend. To find out how long the car will live, we have to ask how many miles does she plan to drive each year? What is her goal, which is 250,000? And then we can use those two numbers to find out the total lifetime expectancy of the car. Finally, we will arrive at the bottom where we get the calculations for the annual cost of the car times the number of years that we expect the car to live. We add in the initial price of the costs and we have a total lifetime cost of the car. It might surprise you that you'll see the numbers up in the range of where you expect to pay for a house. Down a little further, we will calculate the final answer in row 27 and 28. We will calculate the average cost of a year. So we know how long the car expects to go, how many years it expects to go. We also know how many dollars we have total. And so now we can find out what each year will cost for the Spark, Mustang, and Escalade. Highlight these last three numbers with their labels, create a bar chart, and you will give Susan some good information on how much more it will cost to buy luxury cars. On the right side of the equation, we will have Tim. Tim is going to be calculating almost the same values, except Tim doesn't have any money saved. 
And so the initial cost of his car is going to be 40% higher than what Susan paid. And so that 40% includes all the interest and bank fees. So everything else should be the same. He's driving the same number of miles and he expects to go 250,000 before the end of life. And so when you're finished with Tim, you'll have a similar graph, but you might find his expenses quite a bit higher than Susan because he doesn't have enough money to pay for the car in cash.